um, uh, boxing club, sparring for over a year with people like Kurt von Lang, um, Dennis Andreas, and Darren Zaya, <laughs> taking you back from mm -hmm. some years. We are bring my men. I'm bringing you back from, some memories. From, from, from when I left the Grand Men Boxing Gym. Like Those are the people that you sparred with. The Colton Boxing Club is like a boy who turns into a man. Um, 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 bigger men like Conan Lang, Dennis Andrews, John the Big Mangabi. I but, him. but they were also your sparring partners, weren't they? Yes, they were. But um, obviously, within boxing, as we all know, it takes a lot of determin uh, sorry, determination, uh, strength, commitment, self-discipline, mental and physical fitness. What At what place did you don't, don't think you were at? And courage. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but after um, training for a year with, with Darren Dyer and the guys, where did you think you were at? Do you think you were then ready to, to go on to the, to the next step? Because they were just really sparring partners at that time. The time, next step they? of Michael Ben. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, Michael, you, you fought in the 1983 uh, Liverpool Nationals and you know, at the ABA, London ABA uh, Champions. You were both And um, you were seen as one of the, uh, as a great host. Uh, for, you know, to be part of, of the contention for the 1984 Olympics. However, uh, you, you didn't make part of the team. Um, how did you put it? I was very, very deep from my heart. Mm. So my, my, my dream was to be a little bit my my hero, Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. I wanted to follow his follow-on in his footsteps. So my dream was to become an Olympic champion and a world champion. That was my dream. Yeah. I am, and I intended to, to intend it to follow my dream. Absolutely. I just got to share something with you, Michael, that might surprise you. <laughs> and, and it, it relates to the, the, London <laughs> ABA, the London ABA champion, the London ABA champion that you before. You fought a guy called um, John Beckle. direction um, that you were training so hard for and you went on to have a further seven fights winning six by knockouts and drawing one absolutely impressive but the highlight as you just mentioned of your boxing career was just about to begin and that was with the man known as the dark destroyer Nigel Benn now given Nigel Benn's impressive um, record at that time how ready was you, and how did you prepare yourself <coughs> for that fight? What was your regime? You know what? It takes a great fighter to bring out the best in me. After being like Hobbs and sparring people like John D. Mangabe, Cutler Lang, and Den Andrews, they prepared, they prepared me for work. I was full of confidence. 
more mature. What about the boy? Not playing this game in a little, little boy. <laughs> That's not fair. Oh, no, more than me. I don't know. Yeah, no, speaking to that fight with the dog in the night, you, you fought him and uh, you killed the British Commonwealth middleweight title. Who put the top down to the moon there? And that fight was a game changer uh, for you because it gave you a shot at the world class title. Now, the build up to that fight was against Nigel. It was very much the fight. Actually, actually, I was trying to want to save life against Nigel. Mm -hmm. If I was yeah. bowling wide, uh, and then I had the knowledge in my mind, he would have killed me that night. Yeah, because I, I wanted to, to just to let you, the audience, you know, because the build up against that fight was very simple, was very easy to fight. And um, I just want you to, to, to tell us a little uh, uh, about that based on during the build up to the fight before the fight. Because it was, uh, it was the. You know, the a lot of posture and stuff. Yeah, it was a bad posture. I've never experienced anything like in my life. He didn't, didn't feel like him. He didn't feel human. He felt like a, the, the power of hunting. Mm -hmm. Like he had weight in his blood. Mm -hmm. you know, like a machine. Yeah. Now, I, I thought now I was like, now he's going to have the red hot best. <laughs> 22 fights, 22 yeah, minutes, absolutely. 22 knockouts. Yeah. Absolutely. Nobody could touch nine that mm -hmm. super red hot best. Mm -hmm. I made him, I made that fight look easy. Let's talk about that fight. Let's talk about that fight. Because in the first couple of rounds in that fight, Nigel came after you, but you were just determined. Burst of energy and continued flows of punches, which you, you defended, you know, you, you defended well, but you knocked him out uh, in the sixth round, like you just said. Now, what, what was your game plan uh, for winning that fight? Uh, and did you stick to it? Well, now I just come forward and punch himself out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> get tired. Yeah. yeah. Which is uh, what happened. Yeah. Which I, I thought, I thought to myself, it, it, it would be just a matter of comfort for him burning himself out. Mm -hmm. And get that wiped in the end six rounds. Yeah. Confused and, and exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a tremendous fight. It certainly was. But. Let's just come to, because after that fight, it was uh, allegedly um, stated that you hadn't hit the expected height in boxing. And 18 months after defeating Nigel Benn, you were still fighting on the undercard? I thought you were with bad management. Exactly, which is what I'm coming to. Absolutely, absolutely. Because um, you were on uh, 15K, whilst Nigel Benn was on... 500k. Yeah. What a fast! I mean, where's the even half of a comparison? It's just ridiculous. Boxing but but that was that was down to bad management, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and your manager at that time was it? Um, Mickey Gus. Yeah, Mickey Gus. <coughs> so you t eventually, eventually, you took Mickey Gus um, to court, citing a restraint of trade, yeah. and this was in 1991, and the judge ruled in your favour. How did this then leave the relationship, Michael, with yourself and, and Mickey? Well, I've increased for me to self manage. Completely. I became self managed. First fighters become self managed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could be no fighter, to not the soul for border control at, at the position, which I'm sure of. Yeah. I mean, did Mickey have anything to 